Mike, with the way injuries just seem to keep piling up, execution issues, how do you keep the faith in the locker room of now that the lead in the division is down to one game? Well, I mean, I think you have to be professionals. You have to come to work. You have to, uh, we all have a job to do. Um, you know, we have to excel at it. We have to do our job better. You know, we have to, you know, continue to find ways to not, you know, not hurt ourselves in all three phases, to continue to play complimentary, to try to um, sustain, you know, those types of things. And, um, you know, just get the guys ready, try to figure out who's going to be available, where the, you know, where the injuries are, where you have to try to bring guys in. Or elevate from the from the practice squad. Challenge maybe increase the fact that you've got a short week this week and a shorter week next week. Uh, well, we'll focus on this week. Um, you know, so we have you know one one less day to prepare, um, but so do um, you know the Texans, and then you know we'll worry about um, you know what happens after that. Then you know all, we have to put everything into uh, this week. You know, to make sure that we're ready to go, make sure that we're focused, and that the guys that uh, will be in the game will. You know, be expected to to play up to a level and a standard that uh, you know is going to help us win. Been having that conversation about not making the big mistakes and things like that for a couple of weeks now. The offense goes out and you get a penalty from one of your key guys on the on the first series, end up in second and twenty two or whatever. What's that say about kind of the message getting through and guys kind of doing? not doing the things that you've been talking about for three weeks. Yeah, that's uh, going to be a, a quick answer to an incredibly terrible, uh, long question. Uh, just continue to stay consistent and, and focus on improvement and, um, you know, making sure that they understand where some of these penalties occur, you know, pressure. And, you know, Nate kind of went back and, you know, uh, I think Ben saw the backer blitzing. So just understanding, like, in special teams where, you know, those guys – you know, you get blocks in the back out in space is just trying to understand where those occur. You know, Hooper's penalties at the point of attack. You know, it's, you know, those are things that set you behind. Mike, is it getting through? Jimmy, you got anything here? Yeah, I guess I guess the, the final deep ball to, to Mike Williams, I guess, was um, was maybe, maybe in a good coverage and they made a play there. Somebody's supposed to go there and maybe help him. Uh, what maybe went wrong that allowed that late field goal? Our quarterback broke contain and made a play down the sidelines. Defense. Good in your mind? Not good enough. I mean, hey, again, the quarterback broke contain. The guy made a play down the field. So, you know, whether they were on him or not, I mean, they made a play. Mike, got a couple of sacks the last couple of weeks that Daly's given up. There was the chip first. Yeah. Did the chip serve? Yeah, not very good. Not good Did enough. It almost send him around? We got to stop the charge. We've been trying to work through this through training camp. Been some really good examples um, of that getting done, and then uh, you know, unfortunately, I, you know, we 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 chip one time and a couple weeks ago, and we flew out of there and gave up uh, you know pressure inside. So you know, the message was you know when we are getting a chip, we have to you know stay inside out, protect you know, help the guard. You're getting help, uh, and then the last two times. You know, we haven't done a very good job of chipping, and then our tackles stayed inside out to help the guard, and then all of a sudden realized, you know, I probably am going to need to get out of here a little quicker. And uh, so again, we just you know, didn't do a good enough job on that particular play. Ryan moving around today, and is he kind of starting back at square one as far as rehab and trying to get over that? Thing? Yeah, I mean, he'll he'll work, you know, extremely hard to get to get back and find a way to make the the game like he always has. And you know, again, we've Never going to question his toughness or his willingness to to get back and and help us win. As those injuries, like as they continue to mount up, like do you ever look at it and kind of like chalk it up to the physical nature that you guys play with? Or do I you... think everybody, I think that professional football is a physical sport, um, and then I would say most everybody plays plays hard. There's some guys that play harder, but I mean I, I also you know watch a lot of the games and I think that you know I understand it's a physical sport so. You know, that's, uh, you know, where we're at is, is where we're at. We'll have to find out who's available and and try to get uh, the guys that uh, need to step up, get them ready to go. As they mount up a little bit more for you guys over the last couple of years, I mean, do you ever look at that and wonder what Should is Should we not play as hard? 
you know, I don't know. No, no, I, that's that. what I'm saying. Sometimes with the physical style that you play, is that more conducive to guys having more injuries? Like I said, I think there's a lot of guys in the, this league that play hard and that play a physical style of, of football. I, you know, I don't know. Football is a professional football is a violent game. Mike, you said that you evaluate everything and everyone every week. So what's your evaluation of Todd Dunn's play calling from yesterday? Like our, you know, probably like our entire team's effort, not good enough to, to win. You know, um, I'm responsible for every call that goes in, um, whether it gets executed or, you know, it's a good call or a bad call. You know, you have to, you know, look and see times we got into a flow and a rhythm. And I just really, really always curious about play calling. You know, I think that that's, again, I've, I've said it in all three phases. I think it's not, not overrated. That's not the question mark is, uh, you know, making sure that everybody's on the same page, that, that we find ways to, to play the game, to, you know, we were, we were close, you know, and there's just some times where we got into drives, another penalty started to play drives off with, with penalties and getting in third and long. You know, I thought that Malik was was prepared and went in there. It was probably the most comfortable that he's been. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't protect the quarterback again. Um, you know, hit some runs there in the second half that I thought were that were good. You know, you know again, I guess when when Hooper was was wide open, it's a well executed play by by Hooper and, and Ryan and the line. I think the execution and play calling. You know, all go. You know, goes hand in hand. That, that's what I think about the the play calling. With Malik, and you said he looked the most comfortable he's been. Does that play into your decision making this week and seeing the strides? Yeah, I mean, if Ryan's play? healthy and Ryan can play, I mean, Ryan would be our quarterback. But again, I think Malik has put a lot of work into uh, the show team and, and trying to play the game and command the huddle and. Um, do all the things that we've talked about, how he needs to try to develop during the week when there aren't a lot of reps. Um, and, and, he done, and he did that. And, you know, Pat's watching all those reps with him. And, you know, we talked about not making bad decisions in the jog through just because it's a jog through or, you know, he tried to break contain just to, you know, give the guys a look maybe last week or, you know, whenever we were with, with Trevor Lawrence and you know, we kind of threw it back across in the middle of the field. And I think it was a good opportunity for me just to say, hey, I think we need to just take off or, you know, try to progress and try to find somebody on the sidelines, not make those decisions in practice because we would never, you know, want you to do that. So we're always trying to coach him. And I think he has learned from those opportunities. And I think he was ready to go in in the game and, and try to help us yesterday. Was he more decisive? I'm sorry? Was he more decisive? He progressed through. And I think, you know, the one where he took off and um, and, and scrambled, he, he looked – didn't see what he, you know, didn't like what he saw, put the ball away, made a really good move, um, got a first down, slid, took care of himself. Um, you know, I thought on maybe one of the moves, the ball got, you know, a little outside his body, which we'll, we continue to work with. But, you know, I would say the decisive, he progressed through on the third down and, um, you know, was able to, you know, pick up a first down for us. You give much thought to going for two after the touchdown? I think, yeah, I did. I just thought that, where the clock was, I think it, if it would have been down a little lower, you know, that I probably would have. You know, I figured that where it was then, they would have had a chance to kind of do what they did, unfortunately. On a third and two, why, why have uh, Derek off the field? Well, I mean, Derek rotates. We got our package, our pressure package, and prepare a third down back. You know, there's times that Derek's, you know, in there on third and two. There's There's times that, that he's not, there's times that he's in there on third and long. So, you know, we have a, you know, a package that we practice and you know, guys are, you know, prepared for those roles and sometimes Derek's out there. How do you view like third and two? Obviously third and ones are running down, right? But how do you, do you view third and two as more of a passing down? Well, I think it's, you know, predicated on, you know, what you feel like you're gonna see, the looks that you're gonna get, um, you know, the coverage. I mean, usually he's gonna be and they're pretty tight, you know, based on what front they're in. Is it a five down front, four down front? Um, 
And, and again, you have a lot of options where, where you are on the field and you feel like you can, you know, run it or you feel like you're going to go for it on fourth down. That may predicate, you know, or dictate some of the call. You seen the Marcus Walker improve maybe since he's been here. How do you think he played yesterday? I thought he played, you know, really hard. I think he had some good rushes, uh, power rushes, and played with a lot of energy. Uh, I was taking advantage of the more snaps that he's gotten uh, and been productive. Um, so hopefully he can help us. He's you know been very durable and uh, he works extremely hard and appreciate his attitude. Mathematically, when you look at the division right now, there's a good chance it comes down to that last game in Jacksonville. Considering that, is there a chance that you maybe rest guys, try and get more healthy in the next couple weeks leading up to that game? No. When you see what uh, Houston's done the last couple of weeks, they played some solid games against both Dallas and Kansas City. How, how they, I guess, I don't know, stood out to you? Uh, well, they've got a great group of veteran players that um, – you know, played a bunch of football, I, I think, in this league and have been successful, you know, other places, guys that I have a, a great deal of respect for. And they um, and they play hard and, and they compete. And, you know, they should have, had, you know, had Dallas beat, you know, had them beat down there in the goal line in a four-minute situation. Um, they, they continue to be opportunistic. They, they took the ball away and took advantage of turnovers with, with Kansas City, took them to overtime. Um, you know, so they're, they're obviously the record doesn't mean anything. They've got veterans that, you know, have played well in this league and continue to play well and, and adding some, some youth and, you know, so it, again, it'll be a huge challenge. They, they only, you know, took Kansas city to, to overtime with, without some you know, key players for them yesterday. Has this team lost some faith that Mike? Well, I, I don't think that they've lost, anybody's lost any faith. It's, um, you know, it sucks when you lose, it sucks when you, you know, we're in a game and, and, and you lose in the last couple seconds. You know, I think if you if you watch and you know, the effort, you know, I think the competitiveness. You know, I don't think that that we've anybody's lost any faith. Is, is what you're saying resonating because some of the themes that you're hitting are still coming up as problems. Yeah, that's why you coach. You know. As you said, you still got everything in front of you, but uh, you know, with four four straight losses, what do we, maybe your leaders need to do to keep guys? You know, no, we, don't, we, we don't need to keep guys. In. We just need to play better. We need to coach and get them going. And you know, this isn't a cheerleading contest. This is figure out who you got, and get forty eight guys ready for the game. Like this isn't a you know rah rah. You know, this is go out and execute. You know, do the things that help you win and, and eliminate some of the things that. That end up costing you because you can see when we do it well, and uh, we play complementary, uh, that we have a chance to do things. I mean, we got to stop on defense. We got, you know, sitting there at first and goal, or not first and goal, but first and ten on on maybe the twenty yard line, and then, you know, go backwards and miss a kick. So, would like to have some of those things over. Along those same lines, you guys preach so much about the work during the week to get ready for Sunday. Have you seen that slip at all during that stretch, or is this simply we just about somebody needs day. to make a play? Yeah, I mean, we, we walk through. I mean, we walk through 60 reps. So, I mean, it's hard to practice guys that, you know, are barely making it to the game. So we try to come up with a plan that we feel like is best during the week. Like the preparation's good. I feel like the, the energy's good. And uh, I think yesterday was a much different game than – you know, Jacksonville, you know, I think that it was, you know, competitive and, uh, you know, we just, we got beat, beat at the end. We didn't, we didn't turn it over and hand it to them. We didn't give up the big plays. It was really cool to see our defense go out there and sudden change and, and do something and, and keep fighting. I'm assuming last year wasn't much different in terms of the walkthroughs, but in your first couple of years here, did you get more practice time this time of year? And if so, how beneficial is that in the last couple of weeks of the season? I think playing well is the most important thing. So however you have to structure practice, it, just playing well down the stretch is most important. Would you like to, to try that rotation again to get where you wanted to get yesterday? Oh, yeah, we'll see how it goes this week. I don't, you know, we'll see how Dylan, Dylan's feeling. I kind of what you was asking earlier on the on the injury front. How much have you in the last couple of years kind of looked at everything that you guys are doing, and have you have you changed anything or altered anything? Changed a lot. Yeah, we have. I mean, training camp's been different, and 
you know, we track all the injuries. We check how they occur. Some guys are repeat offenders. Some injuries occur in a game. You know, try to limit, uh, you know, try to limit the ones that occur in practice, obviously. Um, but we were very conscious of the training camp schedule, practice schedule. Talked earlier about how we try to have done research on getting guys to 90 percent each and every week. So it's not, you know, just once a week on Sundays, sometimes Wednesday and Thursday. Frank will walk around with the iPad, track guys and say, hey, um, I need to get 90 percent. So they'll manufacture some sort of stride so that's not just, you know, they hit 90 percent on Sunday wait a week and then all of a sudden go out and hit 90%. So we're focusing on some of those things. Um, and some guys are repeat offenders that, you know, have been, you know, showing up there more than once on, on some things that are maybe similar or, or maybe the same injury. Are you surprised given those changes that you're kind of in the same spot you were last year before you made those changes? That's, that's where we're at you know, right now. So we'll continue to, to evaluate and try to, you know, get everybody as healthy as we can. Much of it for you is you just need your guys back when you get to the finish line. Oh well, we need everybody that we can get. You know, we need to, um, you know, try to get everybody that we can get back healthy. You know, see where Danico is this week. See where Zach is this week. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of guys coming off that game that you know may or may not play in the game going you, forward. You mentioned you, you lose a day uh, and with your injury situation, what, what's practice look like here um, as far as how much speed you can do? Um, Say it would look a lot like, you know, last week's, you know, try to walk through, try to do some individual, you know, practice tomorrow and you know, do some stuff on, on Wednesday that, um, you know, it's probably a little faster, but I mean, I wouldn't see us doing much full speed work till Thursday. I know you don't have much choice, but is it harder to sustain the next man up message when it's several next men up every week, all season long? Well, you don't have much of a choice, do you? You kind of have to, you know, put somebody in there and, you know, whether that's Greg Maiman, whether it's Jack Gibbons, um, you know, whoever that is throughout the roster, you know, just trying to get guys to know what to do and, and be able to play fast and aggressive and, and give ourselves a chance. Mike, with the Dontrell oh, Hilliard on IR, do you maybe rethink the way you do some of the rotations with Derek uh, and, and maybe keep him on the field more on third down, with especially as productive as he's been as a receiver this year? Yeah, those are different downs. I think the, the play pass stuff, um, you know, it's different. It's really, a, you, know, you know, we're not using the back to, to create and win one-on-one -on -one and, you know, a choice route situation. And I hope that's not what you guys are alluding to because that would be, that would tell me a lot about what you guys think of and how you view football. Uh, there's a protection element to it that we've worked extremely hard on making sure that everybody knows what to do and Derek's included in that. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously those roles that, you know, when we can get him the ball, I, I do agree with you there. He's worked hard to catch the football. Ryan did a great job on, you know, after the play fake, they didn't go with him. You know, Ryan was decisive, you know, hit the nice screen yesterday. So, you know, there's just some first and second down element that, that may not, um, you know, translate to some. Now, he'll be in there in some third downs, um, you know, and then some he won't be. We hear a lot about rookie wall and to see Roger and, and Chig both ascending Absolutely. when you're past that point, how – yeah, just seeing the look on you know Roger's face, he's so competitive. Uh, he wants to do so well. He internalizes so much that you know again addressed it. I think yesterday's after the you know the mistake last week before half where the ball went through his hands to be able to to know the situation and and you know understand it. And that's a that's a fantastic play. Uh, challenged Williams. I thought you know, the last two weeks have been really. Uh, really good for him as far as just overall consistency, uh, and, and we need that to continue. And then Chig as well, just uh, you know, got to make some improvements, um, you know, at the line of scrimmage. But you know, certainly playing fast, and, and probably one of our better special teams players had an outstanding play on a punt team yesterday. And you know, as more snaps as he gets on offense, you know, he still will, you know, wants to be out there on the punt team and wants to help us and. 
you know, that's been, again, I've said it a million times, trying to, you know, that's the most impressive thing, I think, from him or Hassan is that they, they are really good special teams players.